In the first video, we looked at the true gravity and implications that our past lives have on our life, on our consciousness, and on our karma. We saw how the full potential of our consciousness is not as easily accessible as New Age teachings typically make out, but that we face a serious challenge internally to access our ability to recall our past lives. Our essence remains deeply conditioned in layers of psychological identifications, or egos. And it is this conditioning specifically which keeps us repeating the same scenes throughout the multiple lives we live through the law of return and the law of recurrence, symbolized by the Ouroboros. In this video, we look at the specific practices to remember past lives, alongside guidance, experiences, and wisdom on how to best approach and understand this all, seeking to comprehend it with as little confusion as possible. Before we go into the practical wisdom, after several questions on the first video, I see the need to speak more personally and share some of my own experiences. On this channel, I've shared several astral experiences for the purpose of demonstrating the tangibility of the inner worlds. But these days, I keep them to myself because in reality, it is better not to share our experiences, since they are personal and individual. They are only for ourselves. Unless our inner being guides us to share something for a specific purpose, mostly we should know how to remain silent. If we want spiritual experiences so that we can tell others about them, then obviously our access to experience these mysteries will lessen because there is not enough genuine sincerity in our hearts. So with that said, I can share some interesting examples and what I've learned from my own experiences in order to help you grasp the benefits of remembering past lives. I also do this because I understand there are always new people coming to these videos who don't know who I am, whether to trust me and do these practices, which are very advanced practices, by the way, which you'll see later. And they wonder where the sources of this information comes from. But to those people thinking whether to trust all of this, I say, it does not matter who I am. Me, the I who is talking, is just a personality. What matters is the information being presented to you. That is all. Meditate to the information that you are hearing instead of using the skeptical intellect. In Western society, we've been heavily conditioned to believe that if information comes from some professor with this or that certification from such and such a university, that they have authority to speak on whatever matter they please to do so. But the reality is, if we see such people in the astral, if you really investigate those people, we can see that many of them know nothing of what they speak for themselves, because they only studied it intellectually, and they base their authority on degrees or university certificates that were based on intellectual study. The genuine spiritual practitioner does not base their degrees on intellectual study, but they base it on direct experience of these inner mysteries for themselves. 
If you are not at a point in your path where you are able to intuitively discern what is beneficial or truthful or not, I recommend you start studying and practicing more, specifically with the Gnostic teachings, which I'll talk about more here, as well as beginning meditation, sexual transmutation, and the work on the ego. For those who are already practicing all of this, and they have experience with it in awakening consciousness, they can easily understand all of this information without fear, doubt, skepticism, or confusion. They do not need external scientific studies or peer-reviewed research groups because they know how to investigate such things for themselves. They have become their own pioneers of consciousness rather than waiting for others to tell them what is or what is not. So you can see my other playlists on this channel or start studying the several links in the description below for practical Gnostic resources that I highly recommend. So with all that said, for those not familiar with my previous videos, I will give some background and repeat that my birth name in this life, my persona, or my person, is called Jean. When I was 18, I developed an intense interest and practice for meditation and astral projection. And when I was 20, I was introduced to a Gnostic group. And internally, I am very much part of this esoteric tradition still. This mystery school of initiation was founded by a master called Samael on Veor, who didn't just form it from his own direct knowledge from experience, but synthesized and clarified the timeless wisdom of Gnosticism, or Gnosis. Gnosis meaning knowledge which is based on direct experience, rather than mere belief, or thinking, or opinions, or speculation. Samael on Vior devoted his life to his mission, which was to help humanity awaken to the profound spiritual truths of existence and to achieve self-realization and the awakening of consciousness. He wrote over 60 books and gave thousands of lectures on the most difficult subjects in the world, such as consciousness, Kabbalah, physics, Tantra, meditation, etc. He left a complete doctrine, a synthesized teaching, of how to awaken consciousness. I recommend visiting this page by our friends at glorian.org for more information about him. Although Master Samael no longer has a physical body, he is a genuine master who lives internally in the inner worlds and continues very actively to help humanity. To demonstrate the power he has, at one point, on my path, I found myself in a hell region in the astral plane, imprisoned in a cell guarded by demons. I'm not saying that to add to the effect or to fear monger, it's the truth of the experience. Anyway, after a while, I saw a man dressed in a tuxedo come down into this chamber, this underground chamber, and he visited me there. It was Master Samael. And he looked at me, and then he talked to the demons that were outside my prison. And after some time, they let me go. And I immediately came out and climbed up from that underground chamber, realizing that Master Samael had just negotiated with some kind of dark forces in order for me to elevate or to progress on my path in some way. So that's not to say I'm liberated. Obviously someone who has just come out of prison has a great journey of self-discovery ahead of him. But the point is, the aid, the support, the presence and love 
that I felt from this master is beyond anything I've ever experienced. He truly is here to help humanity escape from the wheel of recurrence. And as with many of my videos, it's his practices which he left for us, which we'll be exploring here. There are many comments on many of my videos about people believing that they cannot do any of these practices such as awakening kundalini or practicing astral projection without a guru or a master. But I tell you, the experience of a guru or a master can only be truly felt internally, in the inner worlds. Nobody external will compare to that kind of experience when you start getting help from divinity. So to those people, if you feel you need a master, turn to the masters who exist in the interior worlds. They will help you. And they can help you much better than any person in the physical can, because they can touch a much deeper part of your consciousness while in the astral plane. This is why we should pray and ask for help. That experience that I just shared with you was the result of my own petition towards divinity, asking, pleading for them to help me awaken my consciousness. Because as we saw in the first part of this series, it is not easy. The path is difficult. These days, many people are reluctant to pray. Seeing prayer as merely some blind religious act. But many don't realize that we are praying all of the time, in one form or another. Usually invoking negative forces through our actions, our feelings, our sentiments, vices, attachments, impurities in our subconsciousness, our ego. The Gnostic organization in the inner worlds, or the White Lodge, as it's also known as, does not just consist of Master Samael on Vior. It is not like an organization in the sense that a corporation would put some staff together. No, it is an intelligence, an organizational intelligence of divinity. It is a cosmic gathering of people with awakened consciousness. It consists of all genuine masters, real initiates who have completed the dissolvement of ego and have self-realized. And within the hierarchy of this lodge of masters in the superior worlds, the highest solar initiate, the highest master, is Master Jesus. So, as for my previous lives, some of them I cannot share, because I would be judged for the things I did in those lives. I especially recall one life from the 1800s where I was a woman who committed crimes. But later I comprehended the suffering I went through that led to leading a life like that. I share that because if you really want to remember your past lives, brace yourself. Do not expect that what you will remember will be pleasant. It is often the case that we first remember what caused the most pain and suffering in each life, because it is that pain which led to the forgetfulness or ignorance of it in the first place. And therefore, the entry point back into retrieving those lost memories is through the pain once again. Remembering past lives is often a conscious shock. It is later on, as you persevere in practice and meditate on the memories that you recall, 
that you will understand it from a place without identifying with the pain or the fear behind it. And then you will start remembering the more pleasant parts of that life. As for other experiences, I did live a few notable past lives with fame and recognition. I had one life in the 1300s as a king, where I fought for my country and was known as a noble hero and saved many people. So, in some lives, I have lived through what the world would consider glorious and virtuous, and in other lives, I have lived through what the world would consider criminal and immoral. All of this is not to glorify or condemn myself, but to demonstrate how we can gather a wide range of self-knowledge and information about ourselves, both the good and the bad, and therefore be in a much better position to understand ourselves more intimately and our overall purpose now and the direction we have to take on our individual paths. For example, in my previous life, I was a very famous celebrity and lived a glamorous life. I was not known for doing anything spiritual. However, in secret, I was very spiritual and extremely interested in esoteric, occult and religious matters. And I also practice astral projection with intense passion and fascination. And I taught it to uh, only the people closest to me, the ones that I could trust. But because of pride, attachment to status and the vanity of my life, fear of judgment, cowardice, we could say, a lack of devotion to my true self, I never talked about or revealed that part of myself to the public. I always held up my facade, the persona of the image that I was known as. This is what many celebrities do today. In this life, I'm able to comprehend why my passion for sharing these teachings, such as Gnosticism and astral projection, is so intense and why I enjoy making it so easy to understand for as many people as possible. Because I repressed it for so long in my previous life. That's not to say I'm some saviour with a divine purpose. No, this is all ego. But it's my karma that I'm living through, that's all. We have to be very careful not to develop false sentiments about ourselves both positive and negative, but just to see ourselves exactly for who we are. That's it. See our true nature. So the point of this is, you have to remain open-minded without expectation. And you also have to be capable of having remorse for your past actions and to be able to handle serious emotional crisis. Recalling past lives is not like watching TV, where your emotions can be easily detached. No, you will feel everything. So you have to be ready. You have to prepare yourself. Temper your nerves. Develop your concentration. And be firm in your practice. Why do you think that we do not remember our past lives? Because of some god or universal law that says we're not allowed? No. It is because we fear facing ourselves. This is why having a practice is necessary. To practice non-identification, self-observation, constantly, always interested in getting to know ourselves deeply and intimately, seeking to know every part of our being, psychologically, emotionally, sexually, our true motives, 
behind each action, our true fears behind each action. We should be like detectives, always genuinely wanting to uncover the truths of our existence. If you want to remember your past lives, you have to study your current life. Because what you will find is, as you advance in this practice, is that through the law of recurrence, the scenes from your current waking life can spontaneously trigger memories from past lives. The scenes from our current waking life can trigger memories from past lives. And while we sleep, we will have astral experiences of our past lives which relate to what we are currently going through in our waking life. Things that trigger these types of spontaneous remembrances could be related to Recurring life circumstances, a repeated type of crisis, meeting new people that you knew in past lives, new life projects, etc. Uh, to give an example of recalling past lives being triggered by my new life circumstances, in my waking life, I recently moved to the Philippines. And while staying in the Philippines, I learned in the astral that I had a past life here. My name was Dominic Hermano, and I helped people with spiritual healing and magical matters. I was known as a Lumiwanag in Filipino, or an Illuminate. And to give an example of a memory triggered by meeting someone, soon after I first met my wife, I saw in the astral that we had past lives together. In one of them, we didn't stay together for very long because of unfortunate life circumstances. But we did love each other very much in that life. And in another life, I grew up in a British royal family. In my childhood in that life, I only lived with other boys and we lived next to a nunnery with nuns who looked after us for most of our childhood. When I became a teenager... I was able to have more freedom beyond the confines of my family and I met a pretty girl who was my first sexual experience. That girl from that life is my wife today. Now, a question that may come to mind is, how will I know it is a past life and not just some random dream? The truth is, you will simply know without any doubt whatsoever. It's like your intuition will be shouting, saying, look, look, this is you in a past life. Remember, remember. Your eyes will just be glued and magnetized to the curiosity in your soul of what this is that you are perceiving. And it will feel like remembering something you experienced a long, long time ago. And you will understand it directly, intuitively. Just as we have memories from childhood, which are irrefutably real, so too do we have subconscious memories of our past lives. And these memories can be lived, felt and touched in such a powerful and palpable way in the astral plane. So, all of these experiences happened during astral projection. Meaning, when our consciousness is awake while the physical body is asleep, giving us the freedom to explore the astral plane, which exists in the fifth dimension, meaning beyond the physical dimension, meaning beyond time and beyond space, making any memory from our past accessible. As long as our own being, our own divinity, allows us to access it, if our heart is genuine enough. 
So there you already have the first and most simplest method, which is get out of your physical body through astral projection and then just ask, show me my past life. You can say it out loud or mentally, it doesn't matter, and you'll be shown something. You can also ask before you go to sleep. You can ask your inner being, God, or your divine mother before going to sleep. You can meditate, focus, and pray something like, Inner being, I humbly ask you to help me awaken my consciousness so that I may remember my past lives. Please show me the memories of who I was in the past so that I may better understand myself today. Help me to comprehend and dissolve my ego so that I may illuminate myself and experience the causes of my karma. I know there are many questions behind astral projection. Many people feel fear about it or discouraged. I would put it down to this. Most people have slow progression in astral projection, not because they aren't using the right technique, but because ultimately they fear facing themselves. When people have astral experiences, and speak of fear, or speak of seeing frightful entities, they do not realize that those entities derive from their own psyche. But most are not willing to consider that it is of their own creation, their own egos. In astral projection, when we attempt to come out of body, but fail due to something like this, this is known as the challenge of the guardian of the threshold, which is a sort of universal mechanism in our consciousness to test if we are really ready to have these spiritual experiences. The guardian of the threshold is intimately related to the ego. The ego is the sum of all our psychological defects, vices and impurities that reside within our subconsciousness. The guardian of the threshold is the personification of ego that stands as a barrier between our ordinary consciousness and the higher realms of spirituality. Any time we face fear during attempting to astral project, it is the guardian of the threshold. And the only thing keeping you from overcoming it is fear. To confront this fear, to confront the guardian of the threshold, is to face all our inner demons, fears and attachments. This guardian tests our determination, our courage and our sincerity in our quest for self-realization. This is why it is essential to comprehending the nature of the ego, to observe it without judgment, and to work tirelessly to dissolve its negative influence through self-observation, meditation, and inner transformation. The good news is, once you successfully get out of your body, once or twice, without fear, you won't usually experience it again. It is a type of initiation that allows you to have more spiritual freedom in the astral plane once you pass it. Some people have already passed it without knowing. But I share that so that when you have an astral experience and face fear, you'll know why. And you'll know how to remain impartial and determined to keep going and stay focused on what you wish to explore. For those who don't understand or know about astral travel, if this is going through one ear out the other, uh, there is an astral projection playlist on this channel. The videos have been organized in the order of what is most helpful. It acts as a free course to help you understand it and achieve it. Now, in terms of expecting what these experiences will be like, of recalling past lives in the astral plane, Something interesting to notice is that they're not always in the same kind of perspective or viewpoint. Meaning, 
Within the moments of experiencing a past life, you could acquire that information in different ways. For example, you may experience a past life from a first-person point of view, as in, you are actually living in the body of your past self again. Not living, but living in the memory of it. Experiencing a scene very vividly, or multiple scenes that you lived through already in that life. You experience it just as you are right now in your body, or just as you remember memories from your current life. Another viewpoint can be from a third-person perspective. It is like you are a flying camera, or just a ball of awareness, observing and watching your past life. Uh, Similarly, you can also just be in your astral body, walking around within the scenes of your past life. You can't interact with it, but you can look around and observe it, and listen, uh, and see what's going on. If you've ever played a video game where you can play back a recording and move the camera around while doing it, it is exactly like that. Another way of getting information from past lives is through an aspect of divinity. For example, an angel, a master, or a spirit guide, we could call it, or your own particular individual divine mother, Kundalini, She may tell you about a past life, who you were, what your name was, what you did, etc. I had one experience like this with my Divine Mother. Each one of us has our own particular individual Divine Mother, and she can appear as uh, several forms. Uh, But in this one, she appeared as a wise old lady dressed in sort of Aztec or Mayan uh, clothes. And she told me that I had lived a life during the Aztec period. And she gave me a necklace with many skulls on it. And she said that I had carved this necklace. And she told me that I had done this work a long time ago. The work on dissolving the ego, killing the ego, which is uh, symbolic of the necklace that I made. And she told me that I had to continue, and this is what I have to do. We are always shown or told whatever we need to know according to where we are on our spiritual path. Another way is that you may not even see your past self in an experience, but you may visit the home of your past life, or you may find items that held a lot of value to you back then. For example, I was a musician in my past life, and I loved music, of course. I held a lot of sentiments for it. And so in one experience, I was back in the home of where I used to live in that life, and I held my favorite guitar. I didn't see or experience uh, my past personality, but I was holding something of great sentimental value to me in that life. And while holding the guitar in my hands, looking at it, feeling it, playing it, I started experiencing the sentiments that I held for it in that life and what it meant to me. And therefore I could meditate very deeply on my egos that related to my sentiments towards music. And I was able to understand a lot especially in terms of my attitudes towards music in this life, both the good and the bad. Sometimes when you see your past self, it may not always be an accurate depiction of what you looked like physically either. Uh, But sometimes, instead, you may see different colors of yourself, so to speak. For example, if you lived a very greedy and gluttonous life psychologically, then you may see yourself as very grotesque looking. I had an experience like this. Uh, In one life, I was very handsome physically, but I saw myself as fat and uh, dirty and just horrible looking, you know? 
And of course, that is because I was comprehending or meditating or seeing uh, the egos that came from that life that I could see and perceive and uh, understand better through really experiencing it in that way, in a very uh, vivid way. Now, as a last tip before we go into the practices, let us talk about sexual transmutation in terms of past lives. As talked about in previous videos in many different ways, I'm going to put it like this. Meditation requires energy. To stay in self-observation constantly, all day, requires more energy. Astral projection, to be conscious even while your physical body is sleeping, requires even more energy. To recall past lives requires even more energy. If you want the best chances of being successful in this, you need to transmute your sexual energy. If you're in a couple and you can practice white tantra, even better. You see, it is false to believe that our soul and our past lives just belong in our mind. You came to this video because your mind was looking for techniques. And although we will be looking at techniques, techniques are not the thing that awakens consciousness. Because techniques are used, they are utilized, they are executed by the mind. It is our essence that enables our power to remember. Our essence is beyond the mind. One of the greatest mistakes that the philosopher Descartes made was to say, I think, therefore I am. He thought that thinking was the same as being. He identified with thinking. Much later, the philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre realized the error in this statement and corrected it by saying, The consciousness that says, I am, is not the consciousness that thinks. That means that when you are conscious of thinking, when you are aware that you are thinking, that awareness is not part of thinking. It is a deeper dimension of consciousness. Thinking and awareness exist in two different dimensions of consciousness. Thinking cannot remember past lives. Awareness can. Essence can. Being can. The deeper dimensions of consciousness in you can. And that includes your sexual energy. The point of this is to emphasize that our awareness, our consciousness, is something much deeper than the mind, and therefore much deeper than just techniques. In schools and universities, we are taught how to work the mind, how to work the intellect. But in spiritual awakening, in authentic schools of initiation, we have to learn how to put the mind at rest and instead learn how to work the consciousness, work the essence, the being. The power of consciousness does not originate in the mind, but rather it originates ultimately in sex. Just as we are born out of sex, it is through sex that we can explore our subconsciousness and unconsciousness. The seed of our memories is stored in our sexual center, ultimately. Our intellectual center is simply the product of our much deeper emotional, physiological, instinctive, and ultimately sexual mind, hidden in the depths of our 
sentiments, our affections, and our attitudes. The intellect is like an echo of all of these, like passing clouds. This is why on this channel, sexual transmutation and white tantra, or alchemy, is repeatedly talked about. Through it, we can heal and recover our nervous system and put our chakras into vibrant activity. Intellect should remain in its own orbit. It is useful for analysis, but it should not be used for recalling past lives. We can see this reflected in how the planet Mercury is often related to our intellect. Yet it is one of the smallest planets. The sun, on the other hand, relates to our heart, nervous system, and sexual energy, and is much bigger and much more profound. Master Samael says it like this, that if a planet were to go out of orbit, out of its own center of gravity, then obviously disaster would occur in the solar system. This is what many people do when they try to practice things such as alchemy, kundalini, astral projection, recalling past lives. They try to place their intellect into it. And of course, they experience all kinds of intellectual confusion and emotional turmoil. The number one advice for these practices is to relax. Relax the mind and only practice. Do not think about practice. Only practice. If you want to accelerate in your progress, read less and practice more particularly with transmutation. There's a playlist for this on this channel. I recommend completing the first four videos and seeing the links in the descriptions of them. So finally, let's look at several practices. We will begin from the most basic to the most advanced. Basic just meaning that it is simple, straightforward, Anyone can do it, and it can be just as powerful as all the other practices, as long as one has faith in them. And the advanced practices just mean it requires skill or experience in concentration, meditation, and imagination. Number one, the most basic practice was already talked about. Pray, plead, petition, sincerely, with genuine emotional longing in your heart to be shown the memories of your past lives before you go to sleep. Wake up and remember your experiences that you had during sleep to see what you were shown. And use your intuition to discern the meanings of why you were shown what you were shown. You have to be very honest with yourself and sincere, in order to discern clearly. Number two, practice astral projection. And whenever you find yourself consciously out of your body, just ask to be shown your past lives. Number three, similar to what was taught on the chakra series on this channel, chant the mantra, ah, for one hour a day. This vowel is pronounced ah, and is related to recalling past lives. And also see this video by Glorian about a similar mantra, which will also help you to recall past lives. It is the mantra abracadabra, and it has to be chanted in a very specific way. Doing this type of meditation will help you to naturally and spontaneously begin to remember your past lives, which will be more understood in the next explanation of number four, which is understand that if you truly know how to meditate, and if you do it at least one hour a day, eventually, over the years, months, days, decades, it doesn't matter, as long as you're making progress, eventually you will begin to remember your past lives naturally. 
but your meditation has to be deep and authentic. The truth is, most people do not know how to meditate, because they never go beyond their own mind, nor do they go beyond the external senses. Most people keep their focus on the physical senses, meditating as part of a hobby or a light-hearted plan in their day, or they just listen to guided meditations. If your awareness is in the physical senses, you are not in deep meditation. Obviously, to explain deep meditation now is a very big topic. I recommend you follow this series on Authentic Meditation by Glorian and complete all the videos. It will help. Number five. Now, this is an advanced Gnostic practice. Before sleep, go into meditation and start recalling all of the memories of your current life from the most recent towards your birth. This is a retrospective exercise and it's very similar to the video I made about meditation on ego, which I recommend reviewing. I will just read out this exact practice as it's taught. Before falling asleep in their bed, our Gnostic disciples must practice a retrospective exercise of their own life, like someone who is watching a movie from the end to the beginning, or like someone who reads a book from the end to the beginning, from the last page to the first page. The objective of this retrospective exercise of our own life is to self-know, to self-discover ourselves, to recognize our good and evil actions, to study our own lunar ego, to become cognizant of our own subconsciousness. It is necessary to retrospectively arrive at our birth and remember it. A superior effort will permit the student to connect his birth with the death of his previous physical body. Drowsiness combined with meditation and the retrospective exercise will permit us to remember our present life and the previous one and other past existences. The retrospective exercise permits us to become conscious of our own lunar ego, of our own errors. Let us remember that the ego is a bunch of memories, desires, passions, anger, covetousness, lust, pride, laziness, gluttony, self-esteem, resentments, vengeances, etc. If we want to dissolve the ego, we must first study it. The ego is the root of ignorance and pain. If the student falls asleep during the retrospective exercise, so much the better, because in the internal worlds he will be able to know himself and remember his entire life and all of his past lives. Okay, that's number five. You can reflect on it, you can reread it, and take from it what you will from your own intuition, and practice it as such. There are links in the description if you would like to uh, find the book that it came from, uh, etc. And finally, number six. This is another advanced practice we have in the Gnostic tradition. It is a very interesting one. Now, generally, we don't talk so much about recalling past lives through meditation. Of course, meditation is always recommended, but generally it's not spoken about uh, for people who are not prepared to recall past lives through the moments of meditation and through visions, because frankly, it's a much deeper skill. You need much development of willpower concentration, imagination, and understand intimately the discernment between your own subjective perceptions and objective perceptions. But with that said, it is possible, and there's no harm in sharing the practice. But generally speaking, this is why recalling past lives from astral projection is much more encouraged, because you get much more validity from it. 
But anyway, here's the practice, and I will read it out again as it's taught by Master Samael on Vior. I'm going to give you a daring one, a technique to recall past lives, to see if you also become daring and do it. Let's see. The one I'm going to give you is the following. Place a large mirror in front of you, at night, in the dark. On the right side, a candle is lit, but in such a way that the flame is not reflected in the glass. Magnetize the mirror strongly. Concentration is needed to magnetize the mirror. Simply to magnetize it, it would be enough to extend your hand over the glass, or rather, fight for your magnetic fluids to permeate the mirror. Just by wanting to do that, the mirror becomes impregnated with that magnetic fluid, meaning your own energy, your own concentration. Next, concentrate on the heart. Yes, on the heart deeply. Pronouncing the mantras. Om, Om. To open the heart chakra. Beg Mother Kundalini to do it. Imagine, and this is a strong work of imagination, that in the heart there is a deep cavern, a cavern on fire, a cavern where there is a lot of fire. Imagine that the Divine Mother appears there in the form of a serpent. Ask her to appear. Also ask her to appear, but pronouncing the mantra, Om Hum. Close your eyes, enter deep meditation. Bring a little drowsiness, just a little, and combine that with meditation. And so, between dreams, asleep, and awake, you manage to see the snake there. Then, when you see it, ask the snake to show you in the mirror the images of your past incarnation, your past return, your past existence, to be more clear. And having said this, Concentrate on the mirror, staring, without blinking, until the mirror, as a mirror, disappears. If we manage to make it disappear, looking without blinking, then another figure will appear in its place. The figure of our person, of our personality in the past existence. It takes a lot of courage, that's clear. If you don't have your nerves well-tempered, then the practice collapses. And if we keep begging the Divine Mother, if we beg her to make us see that past existence, just as it happened, if the concentration is good, we can really see the past existence just as it happened. That is another wonderful way to get to know your previous existence and those before that. By this procedure, not only the previous life can be reviewed, but all previous lives can be reviewed. You have to be practical. If one remains bottled up in nothing more than the intellect, nothing more, one does not get anything. Because the intellect is not good for that. The intellect is useful, yes, very useful. We all need it, but within its own orbit. So... These are the practices. Many listening to this will be beginners, I'm very aware. My advice is to get in touch with your feelings, your emotions, and your intuition, and start following it. As to what you need to start developing spiritually first. Follow your own inner guidance. We all have our own inner master within us. I spoke earlier of petitioning to masters like Master Samael. Yes, it's very good. But first and foremost, we all have our own divine spark, our own master that is waiting to be incarnated in this life. And we can follow it and start intuitively communing with it individually. You may start by studying and practicing meditation, self-observation, transmutation, recalling dreams and analyzing them, etc. Over time, following what your being is telling you to follow, you will gain experience, comprehension 
and your intuition will start to awaken gradually and you can start to have these experiences. And the doubts and confusions that you have today will be long gone by the time you put in a lot of effort. Master Samael always said, those who put in great efforts are sure to triumph. Determination and perseverance itself is a great teacher. Okay, so there's no need for frustration or impatience here. This is all part of our path and we all learn and realize what we need to as we take things step by step. If you listen to all of this without any internal reactions, confusions or fear, then you are very ready and nothing should stop you from acquiring what you spiritually seek. Believe in yourself and start walking the path of awakening consciousness. No matter who you think you are or what challenges you have, nothing is impossible with faith and God in your heart. As Master Jesus said, have faith just the size of a mustard seed and you can move mountains.